Hi, this is Eric Price. I'm director of the Nevada Film Office, and today I'm sitting here with Gail Catula. Thank you for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, locations manager here in Nevada. Gail, thanks, thanks for being with us and doing this podcast. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So we talked a little bit about it as we were getting started. The, kind of the purpose of the, of the podcast is just to get more information out into the community, to introduce the community to people like you who are working here, okay. people that may not know you. Talk about being a locations manager and what a locations manager does and just all that excitement. So, okay. uh, so I appreciate <laughs> you being here. And um, for people that maybe don't know you, I know a lot of people in the community already do, okay. but for people that maybe aren't familiar with you, could you maybe give us a little bit of your background and tell us kind of how did you get into being a location manager here in Nevada? Okay. Uh, well, I've been a Nevada resident for over 20 years, wow. and uh, I always was interested in the arts, and I actually went to the Performing Arts Academy, which is downtown. Great. Um, which is somewhere I ended up filming now many years past when I graduated. Um, so I always was interested in art and design, mm -hmm. and I studied art at UNLV. And I also studied uh, graphic design and communication design in Pittsburgh wow. for about a year uh, before deciding to come back and, and just focus on fine art. Mm -hmm. And I just had an opportunity the last semester of my education, there was a commercial photography class offered. And uh, at that point in time, I was making things. I wanted to take photos of them. So I took, you know, just fell into this commercial photo class. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. We uh, every week would have an assignment to go out. And we had to shoot a project. Mm -hmm. And then I just, by instinct, would go and find locations. And, you know, if, if I wanted to have some of my photo, I would just talk to them and ask to be in the photo. Mm -hmm. And that person, right after graduation, ended up wanting to uh, create a content, uh, a lot of work for Getty Images. Okay. So I was hired by that person in that production company to produce their content, which was stills. Yeah. So that was my first, you know, intro into production. So I was doing everything. I was doing casting. Mm -hmm. I would find the locations and, um, you know, get everyone together doing the producing on it. And then he would shoot. So I did that for about four years. And it was really uh, a really great training ground. Mm -hmm. So you'd mentioned like, you know, people that are interested in, in getting into film or photography. I mean, really, any project you can get in on yeah. and learn any aspect and be open to it, I mean, you really have to. I feel like there's a value to know every part of the set. I mean, that's such a great point. Just even how you got into it, you mm -hmm. know? You know, it's like, you know, I was gonna ask, how did you get into being a locations manager? Right. And it started off with, you know, I was doing my own thing. Right. And I went and found a location, and I just went and I talked to somebody. Yeah. Hey, is this your business? Is this your location? Can I shoot here? Right. And what do you, you know, quite, quite simple. Right. And then, I mean, honestly, I would do that. Um, <clears throat> I worked in California a little bit with him. We would shoot in the casinos. We would do homes mm -hmm. here. And then solely from that work, uh, I would get production companies that maybe he had worked with or other photographers that started coming to me and just say, you know, I just need a location. I don't need you to produce, but you know, we want to come to and, and film a motel in Las Vegas, okay. and they were doing stills. Mm -hmm. So then I would work. I said, you know, not a problem, um, and I would work with that producer to help them find the locations mm -hmm. and do the permits. Um, so that slowly started to happen, mm -hmm. and then the more I grew, uh, you know, I reached out to some of their location managers that I worked with um, that needed seconds yeah. on shoots um, because once you start getting a critical number, I would say, of people on mm -hmm. set or – you start dealing with more than so when things I was working, I was maybe one location a day, or you know, and we were shooting over three days. But the the bigger the shoots, you may be shooting in three locations in yeah, a day, so you yeah. need more than one person. Yep, yep. Um, especially if you want to do it properly. And, you know, we did the Jason Bourne film, and, mm -hmm. and there was one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, there, I mean, I'm trying to count all the location managers that were on that, right? And the and the various units, just because the scope of it. And but, but what you say is fascinating to me and, and fascinating to, I think, people that are listening is just the way you went from starting out to where you are now was a very kind of holistic approach to I needed a location for my project. I found it. I coordinated it. I started working with someone. I kind of grew up with them. And mm -hmm. then I was able to go out on my own. And then I started bringing in other people to work with me. 
and then they'll graduate and go out on their own. It's just kind of how the business works, right. right? Yeah, and I, you know, the people then, as I started working on bigger shoots, I, I had some really great mentorship with, um, you know, learning about how to shoot, you know, there's like, you know, commercial with cars and, and dealing with police and ITC and yeah. things like that. So the bigger your project gets, the more elements you have to understand about the location. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really been just a growing process. You know, I didn't start on those things. I started yes. on smaller things and you just learn. And the other thing is I didn't say no to a lot of things. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I really tried my best on any project that I had yeah. to do the best I could so um, and do really any role, you know, even if maybe it wasn't required of me to, to make something happen. You know, that's so important. What you mentioned is, you know, I didn't say no. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe we could talk a little bit about that. There's so, you've said so much that I want to talk okay. about. Um, but you know, the idea that when you're on, when you're on set, um, that having attitude of like, what can I do to make this a more successful production? You know, right. it's not about, that's not my job. And this, you know, Yes, to a certain extent. You don't want to yes, step on anybody is. else's exactly. toes. Obviously, that's yeah. your job. But, you know, for someone beginning in the industry, the attitude of, I'm here to work and I'm here to contribute. And, you know, what do you need me to do? And that right. attitude is what will move you up through the ranks, I think. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, even in locations, what I, you know, there's a lot of logistics. There's a lot of things that are going to change. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of problems that are going to present. Uh, you know, from your permitting to locations saying no to you. Yeah. And so it's like you have to be adjusting to all of those circumstances. And so I think the best personality to be a location manager is someone who can be a problem solver, right? You want to be a problem solver, right. not a problem causer. Right. And that's what will not get you hired back. Right. And But by solving problems, you become... The resource everybody goes to right so you talked about problems and 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 that as we talk about like being a locations manager mm -hmm. um you know a lot of people might not totally understand what that entails you know they might feel that oh you find a location and you're done that's just the beginning right right it is i mean i mean maybe if you could walk us through maybe either an example or just okay. Like, what's a typical production like? You need to go out. They contact you. You're typically one of the first person they'll contact. Yes. They'll call the film office. They'll look for locations manager. We'll, we'll help them find those resources. They'll hire you. And, and then what happens? You know, what, what's kind of it like? Uh, I'll use an example. So I, I had uh, an amazing opportunity. I mean, probably once in a lifetime, I feel like. But I worked with Prada shot a big campaign here in Las Vegas. And it was, I mean, I would say my friend said, that's a love story. It's like a love story to Las Vegas. So we filmed in downtown. I mean, everything. They, they filmed all of our lights. They really took the backdrop of of our hotels yeah. and, and environment. And they, they put it in the ad. Yeah. Um, we and, love that stuff. Yeah. It was right. great. So as far as that shoot, I mean... There were a lot of, we actually had uh, two location managers uh, and then another one hired on. And actually, the production company had their own location managers. So okay. there's a lot, it was a very, a lot of moving parts. It's a big shoot. We had um, probably three locations a day, if not more. Mm -hmm. And then they were also shooting stills. Mm -hmm. So, as far as locations, I mean, what, oh, being overseeing that, yeah. um, you're not only in the initial phases, reaching out to the locations finding to the scout locations them. locations to begin finding with. Them. Right. So finding them. Um, then you're also negotiating the contracts, um, which, you know, it's kind of a slow process because when you start working on the film, they may, or the commercial, they may not know everything they want to do. Mm -hmm. So you're trying Huge. to like have dates kind of locked in softly. Um, then from there, as you're kind of moving forward with the shoot and you know more of what they need logistically, mm -hmm. um, you're going to start looking for parking. Um, on this shoot, there was a lot of street closures that happened uh, that we needed police. So we also had to get police permits. Uh, you're arranging the times that people are meeting you mm -hmm. um, and, and then releasing them. You are um, working with, uh, in that case, we actually had wet downs. So we actually worked with the city on that for streets. Yep. We had, um, like I said, parking. We had a lot. They had huge, huge base camps. So we had... Um, you know, a main base camp, but also because we had different locations, we we're also having to find smaller base camps mm -hmm. in downtown and places to put craft services. Yep. And where are the porta potties going right. to go? And where's the electric going to come from? Right. So you're coordinating all that. Right. Yes. And you're, you know, you're giving feedback. Not only you're writing this all out for the city, mm -hmm. um, but then you're also communicating with the 
production to, mm -hmm. you know, to align what they need with yeah. what the city needs and making sure it happens. And as we know, you know, uh, the productions and the creative types, you know, they can change your mind like that. Yes. Right. So you've it's planned true. all this out and this is going to go here right. and the agreement. And then the director says, wait a minute. Right. Things and can everything change. Changes. Well, you know, the, I would say what's interesting uh, on this one, which was a, a little bit of uh -huh. a different challenge, um, but it kind of came about where, you know, we're locking the locations in yeah. and then they didn't have art department on yet really um okay. they production designer i think he was starting but we hadn't seen what they were bringing in mm -hmm. and then we get these drawings and we're probably i don't know two weeks out mm -hmm. from the shoot and they're actually neon signs that they're going to bring in and i thought oh well maybe it's plastic neon or something yeah no i mean this was real. everything that the director wanted was real i mean so they weren't going to nothing but the best mm -hmm. for the shoot mm -hmm. so um at that point with Prada, they were designing this uh, dinosaur logo that was going to be in all of the women's wear. Okay. Okay. And so they sent us this picture. They said, well, we need to install this now on the top of one of downtown's buildings because <laughs> we're, we're going to see it through the window for one shot. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, you know, like it's real. It's a real neon sign. He's like, oh, yes. And they, you know, it's funny with production. They don't hesitate. This is not a problem for yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. And it was uh, 1,600 pounds that we had to get on a rooftop. <laughs> and so we had a bar that I could see, you know, we knew where it would have to go. So I contact the building. Okay. And um, it was a bar. And he was he was willing to talk with us. But he goes, you know, my building First is 40 so. years old. So I don't have any building schematics. I don't know if it could handle the weight of the sign. So that ended up being a challenge. We ended up having to get um, a structural engineer to go wow. to the building and then uh, make sure it was safe for the sign. So I was with them through every, because the production company wasn't here. Yeah. So I would go meet him at, you know, six in the morning and then coordinate with the, the building to let us in. We would go look at it. Mm -hmm. And it was just a really important part of their shoot. And they you wanted know? it and the creatives wanted it yeah. and they don't care. And I don't care if it's 1600 yes. pounds and the building's 40 years old. Yes. You know, and it's, it's such an interesting story because, um, Again, finding the location is just the beginning. Exactly. And I don't think people fully appreciate what a location manager does right. and how valuable they are. Um, and just that story right there illustrates the number of things that you had to do that we just talked about. You know, I had to coordinate with Metro. I had to coordinate with the wet down company. I had to coordinate with traffic control, coordinate with city and local governments, with business owners, write contracts. Make sure those contracts were, you know, were, were everybody understood them. Get right. them engaged all at, all at this time frame, all while coordinating these other people. I mean, this is, you have to really be someone who is organized. You do. And someone who can deal with people effectively mm -hmm. and relationships and egos and get things done. Um and so much is involved. Yes, there is a lot involved. And it, it's like you said, it can be a last minute thing. You know, when I took on the job, I didn't know hey, last minute. that they were going, you know. This is not six yeah. months, a year in advance. This <laughs> right. is, oh, we needed a permit on Thursday and we're yeah. going to shoot all weekend and make right. that happen. Right. So, I mean, and we had great support. I mean, the city ended up, you know, aligning that where we could get yeah. the proper permit to get the, the sign up there and. Um, you know, we found a structural en engineer and we, you know, we solved the problem. They helped yeah, us find a structural they, engineer. Yeah. I mean, like people just <laughs> don't think about it. They think, right. oh, oh, this place looks cool. We're going to film there. And hey, they're not all super complicated. No. Yes. I'm so, using my complicated <laughs> yeah, right. project for this one. But it illustrates the the width and breadth of the, the things that you need to be able to do. Yes. As a location manager and why you being a trained professional brings value to the production. You can't just have someone who's never done it before go find a place and it's done. Right. It's yes, there's a lot about relationships difficult. and, you know, I think just experience. And, and I think it just being a local, too, I always want to hopefully that people have a good experience yeah. in filming. It, it, it's not easy. It's not easy on these locations. You know, yeah. they, they take time out of their already busy work day yep. to align these Let's things. Let's talk about that, the challenges of filming on location. Yeah. You know, the business disruption. We know a lot about that. People come to Las Vegas because they want to film in one of the most iconic cities in the world. Right. That's what we are. But, you know, we're that for a reason. There's a lot of business happening here. The casinos are busy. The restaurants are busy. So when you approach a location mm -hmm. with a production, you know, there's going to be business disruption, and that's going to be part of the contract. How are they going to be compensated? Right. But that's got to be a huge challenge. It, it really is. And I think some of that, um, you know, when I'm on any project, is that letting production know that is a challenge. Because in, in all honesty, somewhere like, I mean, not that I 
film a lot in L.A., I don't think it's as much as a challenge for them because they can find a lot more places that will close down. Las yeah. Vegas, really, even if they're on board to have your filming project there. It's a there, smaller community. Yes, you have to work around the casinos yeah. and the location. So, you know, being a local or, you know, anyone on our sets, they, yeah. you know, whether it's Grip and Electric or, um, you know, the PAs, they have an understanding locally of what it takes to be in a casino. So, I mean, that's what we bring, right? What, you know? The, yeah, such a great point. I'm sorry to cut you off. Such a yeah. great point is... That by hiring a local, locate, we've, we've already discussed that a locations manager's job is very difficult. There's a right. lot involved. Um, and there's many qualified location managers all around the world. Uh, we're a, an associate member of the Location Managers Guild International, so we, mm-hmm. know, we know these, these, these hardworking people. Uh, but, but hiring someone local, they understand the locality. They, mm-hmm. un, they know the c- city of Las Vegas people. They yes. know the Clark County people. They have relationships that they've built over the 14 years that they've been doing this right. to make those things happen. So I think, one, the value of hiring a professional location manager is critical. But two, hiring a location manager who understands that environment is equally critical. Oh, it's very important, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. even just planning stages that they realize maybe they can't shut something down or, you know, the likelihood if they're in a casino, uh, you know, maybe they only have two hours. You know, that's going to yeah. affect how they are approaching of what they want to film. Um, and you yeah. know that because of your experience of working on right. many jobs with these companies, on these streets, with these police, all right. that stuff. So you provide all that value mm-hmm. just by being someone who lives in this community. Yes. And also me, as you know, the other value of being a local location scout and manager is, you know, the strip changes all the time. Mm-hmm. So something that was, you know, in downtown mm-hmm. uh, a month ago is yeah. probably not there. Yeah, right. Um, and I experienced that all the time. There was a there's a really uh, great – there was a great part of um, – the city of Las Vegas sidewalk, which was the Holiday Motel, mm-hmm. and has some great vintage signs. Yeah, yeah, and we yeah. would always film there. Yep. Um, it had, uh, you know, some wedding chapels and things like that. And just even recently, they've actually someone bought one of the hotels, and now the signs down. And mm-hmm. so, kind of these streetscapes are constantly changing. Always. So, uh, as a local, you're you know you can go out and shoot something immediately for someone. You don't mm-hmm. have to fly someone in, uh, and then you tend to. Myself and I'm sure other location managers, you you're kind of always listening for new things that are being built. Yeah, you know that we could actually shoot in. So I, you know, I think that's another value of having someone local. As a location manager, what 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 are like the tools of your trade? I mean, do you have like a kit? Like what I you do. got your camera, you got your laptop. What what does that look like? Uh, so definitely my go tos. I have a Sony. I, I switched to a Sony camera because mm-hmm. I I shoot a lot at night. Mm-hmm. So um, I was actually scouting for a movie that's on iTunes now. It's called uh, Gloria Bell. Yeah. Uh, that's doing well. It's number two. So if Fantastic. you want to download it, I don't know when this is going to air. Yep, download um, it. <laughs> but uh, I was shooting all night for them. Uh-huh. And so I switched to that camera. So that's my go-to camera. Uh, you know, to be honest, I used to bring a tripod, but I mm-hmm. tend to, when you're scouting, um, these uh, marketing managers are so busy, I tend to try and be really quick. So I don't even sometimes bring a tripod unless I'm on my own time, maybe say like Fremont um, experience or so, something I mean, you're, like you're that. So, you're walking the property or the location with the representative yes. from that business, and they're kind of hustling you through, and you've right. got to snap your photos, and you don't even want to set up a tripod. No. You just need to get it. That's how yeah. quickly you want to get done. I try and get quickly because I don't – I always want, you know, that they're they're – they feel like it's going to be an easier process, yeah. you know, for them because they're taking their time out of their day. Um, if I'm somewhere like downtown, then I'll do more of a setup. I'll bring a tripod. I'm, you mm. know, on my own time. Yeah. Uh, I use my phone a lot for maps. Yep. Um, if I'm, you know, interesting, I use that a ton for uh, my sun reading. So, you know, determining sunrise and sunset yeah. and where sun position is. Um, usually it doesn't come into play until, you know, we're actually sh- building a shooting schedule mm-hmm. for someone. So yeah. knowing that for the um, director. And so I have, uh, there's different apps you can use. I use one called Sunseeker. Okay. Um, but there's a whole bunch of different ones. Someone just turned me on to uh, one that's called Golden Hour, which I'm going to mm-hmm. download, which tells you exactly when uh, Golden Hour is. Oh, wow. Uh, and then maps, I use Google Maps. I was actually in a job this year where um, I didn't have Wi-Fi as I was scouting, mm-hmm. and I was going cross country. And so, Google Maps, I would download my section of where I was driving, yeah, and then um, could be offline and using those as my maps. So I use that all the, the time. Tools have really changed. I yes. mean, it's your camera, your phone, yeah, you know, right. a host of apps, maps. 
Uh, and then my laptop, I use all the time. So yeah. then I have a hosting website um, that I post my pictures on. Um, obviously, email. And uh, depending on how the production works, but, you know, yeah. usually I use a lot of Excel. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh -huh. I'm a big fan of Excel. Yeah. Me too. Yep. I'm an accountant, so okay. I know all about that. Yes. Um, when, 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 you thought, when you think about being a location manager and being a good location manager, mm -hmm. what, what, is that, what does that mean to you? What, you know? uh, I'm going to go towards the things I really like about it, mm -hmm. which would be I, what I've enjoyed is I get to work a lot with the um, art department. I get mm -hmm. to work with the story. So I think the big thing for me is, you know, matching what someone's envisioning with that story. You know, was there a mood of it? Mm -hmm. um, what are the camera angles? And then figuring that out for them. Because I'm the, you know, I'm the first person here that you is are. seeing and like creating those frames for the DP or the yeah. director. Um, so for me, that's, you that know. First impression. That is, that's to me the best part of my job is when yeah. I'm out there creating that or showing them what's here. That's you know, hands down my favorite part of, yeah. of what I do. Yeah, and that's what gets you enthused to want yes. to do it every day. Exactly. From from a production standpoint, mm -hmm. so maybe flip the script a little bit and say, if I'm the producer and I'm looking to hire a locations manager, mm -hmm. um, what what do you think they look for when they're hiring? You know, we talked about all the different things that you need to do. Right. But, like, what, what makes what – makes a good location manager in the eyes of a producer? Who are they trying to hire? Uh, you know, I do think that they there is often an appreciation for having someone local because there are some logistical issues that they want to understand. Mm -hmm. um, so they know if they hire someone local, they'll have a better knowledge. Like, let's say you're filming at Valley of Fire. You know, you've been out there. Mm -hmm. um, you maybe know that the cell phone service doesn't work before they Just do. Just that stuff alone yes. is so valuable. So I think, you know, a lot of times they'll they'll want that local knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um you know, it could be that you've done similar work. So maybe if they're shooting a car commercial, they'll want to know that you've done a car commercial. Yep. So oftentimes I'll try and find out what they're shooting and then maybe what I've done in the past would align to their project. Mm -hmm. Show them yeah. how you have done things in the past right. that they're looking for. To, to make it simpler and easier for them. Right. So, you I mean, know? like a reality show would be different to scout for than a feature versus yeah. a commercial. Um, so that, that information is important to get from them. Mm -hmm. So then you can say, you know, I've worked on this project that's similar. Yeah. Or I've done um, a scout, you know, cross-country. So I know how to go cross-country and scout roads for you. Right you on. know, so those kind of things. And being a good communicator, mm -hmm. I would think, you know, I mean, you know, there's so much back and forth yes. in those early stages. Being able to effectively communicate with the production you know, being uh, able to get a hold of, you know, right. answering the phone when it rings and replying to emails quickly and effectively and, and not stalling time is money and, yes. and making their life easier. And I know. would say that's very important because I've noticed that timelines have gotten shorter and shorter, which is harder for us yep. to accommodate. But, um, you know, lead time that they have to produce something and to scout it is, you know, it can be very short. Yeah. So they may need someone to go out the next day mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. That's got to be it. That's got to be a tough part of your job is everything could be. You could have a vacation planned, and right. then somebody calls you and has a huge budget commercial and wants you to work on it, and it's a good deal. It's good yes. money, and, and so you got to change. It you just do. seems like at a moment's notice, your schedule can always be changing. Yes, that is true. That's a you have to be adaptable. Yes. You have to be. Yeah. <laughs> you do not have a nine-to-five job. <clears throat> so anyone that's interested in, in this field, and it doesn't have to be just location <laughs> right scouting. On. I mean, that is really Production. anyone in our field, you know, they adapt to that. Yeah. They really yeah. do. Well, uh, there is so much that we could talk about, okay. and uh, you know, I look forward to maybe we could do more of these and expand upon some of these topics. Mm -hmm. I feel like we, I feel like we just started scratching the surface, really, on a lot of what you do and 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 the role of, of a locations manager. So, uh, but but as we're running out of time on this one, yeah. I look forward to talking more again. And I just wanted to just wanted to thank you again for being here and, and sharing some of this information with the community. You know, anything that we can do to provide more information to people that are in the industry locally or people that are looking to get into the industry or just want to learn more about it, right. uh, you know, I, I think they will definitely appreciate uh, hearing your voice. So okay. thank you again. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. This is Eric Price with the Nevada Film Office. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Gail Catula, Locations Manager. Uh, look on the website for more information and more podcasts. Thank you very much.